Hey everyone, Nick Dingle here again for Unity 5. Let's have a look at the interface. So the most important part to ever look at is going to be right here at the top center of the screen. That is on your toolbar, they are your play, your pause and your step buttons. Okay, so if you want to turn your game on and see how it plays, you simply press the play button. Okay, if you want to pause the game without stopping it, you hit the pause button. Okay, and you're allowed to make changes to things while the game is playing. And when I unpause by clicking it again, those changes will actually be, well, kept, all right? The third button is called the step button. Now, if I hit this, you're going to notice it'll pause the game, and that's really important to notice, okay? If I hit that button, each time I press it, it advances the game one frame, okay? So if you're having issues and your animations are screwing up and you want to see exactly what's going on, you can press this button a number of times, and it's going to advance the game the slowest possible way for you to have a look at everything that's going on. Now, to stop the game, you simply hit the play button again, and you're back to designing. You'll also notice, because the game, I made changes while the game was paused, when you, un, when you stop the game, so unplay it, every change you make is undone. Now, be very wary of that, because I have a number of students who get caught out by that, because they pause the game, they make a heap of changes, and when they unplay it or stop the game, it undoes all their changes, and it's pretty frustrating to begin with, which I understand. Anyway. Those are the bare basics. Let's have a look at the interface on the whole. We'll have a look at the tabs. So we've got hierarchy, scene, game, asset store, inspector, projects, console. Now I don't want to spend too much time on everything because I want to move on to showing you how to navigate the game. But the main place you're going to spend most of your time is the scene tab. Okay. In the scene tab, this is everything inside your level. Now you'll notice I haven't got much. I've got a light and I've got a camera. And that's pretty much it. So if you want to place an object in your level, you're going to be putting it in here. If you want to scale it, move it, rotate it, add a script to it, whatever, most of that work is going to be done in the scene. All right. So coming down a little bit, if you created a 3D project, you'll notice that this 2D button is unticked. If you created a 2D project, it will be ticked. And this is what your view would be like. Okay. So what happens is I've now only got up, down, left, and right to work with. I don't have any depth in and out. Okay. So if you wanted to work in 2D for whatever reason, you can just tick it in, and when you're done, you can tick it again. And the same thing with 2D projects, you can actually turn 2D off and have a look at your game in 3D mode, okay? Going along, we've got lighting. If you want to turn it off, click that button. If you want to turn your audio on, click that in or turn it off. This is the different elements in your world. If you don't want a skybox, tick it, and you have no more skybox. Fog flares and animated materials same thing i don't have any of these so it won't make any difference when i change them anyway now the only last couple of things i haven't talked about is this shaded this is how you can view your world now i haven't actually got anything in it so selecting these ones won't make a difference we'll have a look at them later gizmos so gizmos some objects don't actually have a 3d body and you can't see them and we've already got two examples of those we've got a camera and we've got a light so they represent them with 2D icons in your scene, also known as gizmos. Okay, so I can click on the camera by selecting the camera gizmo. And I can select the light by selecting the light gizmo. Okay, if I don't want them to appear, let's say I've got a number of lights and they're getting really cluttered and I hate them. Okay, I can simply click on the icon for light. Same thing for camera. Off they go. Okay, just bear in mind, if you turn them off, you can't select them. All right, so I'm going to turn them back on. And the last two options I skipped over up here, we've got 3D icons. This is how big your gizmos are. So if I want to make them really big or really small, there you go. And I've also got show grid. This is the grid here, guys. We've got those little white lines. If I tick that, it's gone. If you tick it, it's back. Okay, so that's the scene tab. Now, the game tab is exactly what you saw before I hit play, and it swapped from the scene to the game. So if you want to see what your game would look like without running it, you can simply click on the game and have a look. Okay? You've also got a couple of options up here. So if you want to change the monitor you're putting it on, if you want to change how big the screen is, the free aspect means that it's going to scale your game to the right size of the game window. You can also go 5.4, 16 by 9. They're probably the most common ones. Okay? Unless you're working on phones and tablets and things like that. Over the side, we've got a couple that are pretty interesting. You've got maximize on play. So when you hit play button, it takes up the whole screen instead of just that little portion that you saw before. Mute audio is exactly how it sounds. Turn the audio off. Stats, you can have a look at how your game is performing, okay? How quickly it's rendering, how many frames it's going, network load, different things like that. And then you've got gizmos, so you can turn them on and off as well. 
Okay, so that's the game tab, the asset store. If you want to buy things or you want to get some assets for free, like models, scripts, stuff like that, come here and download them and you can purchase them. And if you've got your Unity account attached, it will actually attach to your Unity account. So you buy it once and it will stay with you forever. Okay, I'm not going to go through the asset store though. Now, quickly going over to the left, over here, we've got the hierarchy. So the hierarchy is all the objects within your level. Okay, so if I start adding things to my game, which I'm going to quickly do now, whoop, things like that, you'll notice that they start appearing in the hierarchy. Get out of that. Okay, and I can actually select those objects by clicking on the hierarchy rather than clicking here in the scene if you prefer to. Okay, and that's pretty much it with the hierarchy. Okay, it's what you see is what you get. If you've got a cube, you should find the cube up in the hierarchy. But bear in mind, this is just for this level. If I make a new level, the hierarchy is going to be emptied and I'll have to start creating more. Okay. Now, to lead on from that, we've got a project tab. Now, the difference is hierarchy is everything in your level. Project is everything in your game. Okay, it's all your models, all your textures, all your scripts, just like I said in the last video. So if I have, I'm going to have a character I can put in. Ooh, rollable. Never used this. I can click and drag it in. And you'll see it adds it to the hierarchy. And it's still inside my project. So I can actually use this multiple times. And you'll see each one pops up in the hierarchy as well. Okay, that's just something to keep in mind. So the pro everything that's available to every single level is in your project. Everything in your level is up here in the hierarchy. The final window we haven't looked, oh sorry, console. Let's look at him before we look at the inspector. Console, if you have any warnings or errors when it comes to scripting or any other things you're playing with, they're gonna appear here. You can get information, warnings, or errors. Okay, and you'll see the icons here, information, warning, errors. If you don't want to see any errors, you can untick that and you won't get any more error messages. Okay, they're going to appear as one big long line and they'll have a description of what's going on and what's a potential solution for if it's an error or a warning. All right, the buttons over here are pretty easy. Okay, clear if you have any messages, they're gone. Collapse is if you're getting lots of messages about the same thing, tick that and all the same messages are going to be grouped into one and then it just gives you a number of how many have appeared. Then error pause, if you get an error, it pauses your game. Okay, that's pretty much it. Now with the hierarchy, he, oh sorry, I said hierarchy. Inspector, he's probably the most important one. When I click on an object, it shows me all the parts that make up that particular object, okay? You'll notice that it's got the name, it's got tags, layers, prefab, because this object is what you call a prefab. I'm not gonna get into it in this video. But then it's got all these different components and they're separated by that dark gray line. Okay, every object will have a transform. A transform describes its position, rotation, and scale inside the world. So if I move something, you'll notice that the values inside transform change. If I rotate something, the same thing happens. Okay, and if I scale something, once again, you'll see it change up in the transform. So everything, including cameras and lights, and even empty objects, I created an empty object before, have those values. So that's an empty object there, guys. Has nothing on it. Okay, and there's lots of other stuff that you can add, and each one of these things are called a component. All right, the more you add, the more complex it's going to get. Okay, but each component adds a bit of functionality. So the mesh filter says what shape it is. The mesh renderer tells the game to draw it. So if I untick that, it's not going to be drawn anymore. The sphere collider gives it collision. Okay, so again, I can untick that, and we have no more collision. Those green lines are our collision. Rigid body gives it physics. And then we have a couple of scripts and then this material, which is obviously the, um, the color that the ball is. But anyway, that's the basics. Those are all the tabs. If you wanted to add more, have a play around with the other tabs as well. You can do that clicking the hamburger menu, going down to add tab and having a look at these ones. So animation, for example, we haven't looked at. Profiler, we haven't. So maybe have a look at them yourself. I want to move on to the next video where I'm going to take you through actually working with the scene, moving around and modifying things just like I have a little bit already. So thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you in the